Welcome to another edition of Spud's Beating, uh, I mean workout. Today's training is a, a hodgepodge of, of various things that I've done over the years. Um, it's basically, this one's an attack on the legs where we do a wide stance regular belt squat and then we do a close stance front squat with, with the front squat harness. I wanted to combine the best of both into one workout. Basically this is a volume workout where he is going to be going back and forth. The, whatever your weakness is, if you're a close stance squatter, then the, the, the reps on the, high, on the wide stance squat is what's going to be uh, in a higher range. So what I look for um, on a wide stance squat, for a close stance squatter, is about 10. And then on the front squat, we're going to do five. Basically, we're going to, go, we're going to do one right after the other. We're going to load the plate, maybe two plates. I don't know. It depends on what the guy can take today. Um, and then we're going to keep going up until we reach a point where it's a pretty simple thing. You reach a point where you really struggle to get the 10 reps and the 5 reps. And you can adjust reps any way you like. I just like this particular one because it's just a quick, hard, uh, not only cardio based, but also uh, hypertrophy based. So it can apply to any person out there, you know, either a power lifter on a deload or it can apply to a bodybuilder just on a sheer volume. So my victim today is Josh, and this is Josh's first day on the job. So let's crush him. Let's go. All right, so the other thing I didn't mention about this was the amount of volume on the warm-up coming up. So again, we're doing 10 reps on the wide stance. Josh is a close stance squatter, and he actually worked out legs a little bit yesterday, so we're going to really finish him off. So he's gonna do the wide stance 10 first and then come in with the close stance on the front squat harness right here. He's gonna hook that off. And in between, you get, he's gonna get a slight rest, maybe 20, 30 seconds between each set until he can't do it anymore. And then, you know, we might, during the, during the session, it's okay if you, if you have to, as you go up, take a little bit longer break between each one. And then at the end, we got a little surprise. He sort of knows about it, but not really. Here we go. So on the belt squat, you really want to drive and pull the hips through. And on the first ones, it's always nice and easy. But as we go up, it'll get a little more difficult to focus on the lockout and really squeezing the cheeks and pulling the hips through. So when you get the hip, get the 10, we just stop, lock it back up. All right, so he's gonna step out of the belt squat right now. Believe it or not, actually taking this on and off gives you a little bit longer rest time, but we'll, still, we'll just do another set or two to make up for that. So let's pause a little bit in the bottom. Let's go all the way down. Yep, I like to stop at the very bottom because you get a better stretch. And you also, and you also things kind of relax into a longer form, all right? So set one. So I'm old and I like to go up very slowly and take a lot of warm up. So I'm gonna kind of do that to Josh right now. Instead of putting two plates on, which is generally what most guys do, I put one plate on so that we get some more reps as we go up. So we're just increasing the amount of reps, the volume that you're gonna do here. And as we go, like I said, the, the, 10, the 10 reps is going to be nice and easy as we begin, but then the fatigue will start accumulating in there, and that's when he'll yearn, he'll yearn for some longer rest periods. Remember to pause in the bottom, go all the way down. Now go. Now try to breathe through your nose and through your stomach. Just get a nice pace. Don't try to hold your breath. So it's going to be a harder situation as you go, so uh, regulating the breath as much as you can in the beginning kind of helps you be able to withstand this. How's your first day on the job? Hi. <laughs> so he's sort of losing his breath a little bit already. And same thing on this time. A lot of times they try to, people try to tighten up the, the, the stance a little bit. And that's okay, just to, just at least on the wide stance, try to keep it and not too narrow on the other one. And that's the other thing about doing these, the belt squat and the front squat is like regular squats and keep going. 
say regular squats and front squats, um, you, you might have some back issues and some, you know, you're not able to complete the lift. Usually on a belt, usually on a belt squat, you're able to complete it without any back pains, and it's just really, it's really just a large accumulation of fatigue. Remember, try to breathe through your nose and regulate as much as you can. Again, if you regulate through the nose, it's a little bit easier, but as you go, you're just gonna be a mouth breather. There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing you could do except try to survive. Typically, you know, for me, on this one, after all the sets, it's about four plates or five plates. We'll be done with this in less than 20, 30 minutes. If, if you can keep up cardio-wise, you know, and you're still going to have a hell of a leg pump. And, and I didn't say this earlier, but a lot of guys with the wide stance, and everybody wants the hamstring tie-ins, everybody wants all that stuff. The wide stance stuff is always going to hammer the hamstring tie-ins and the glutes a lot more than a narrow stance will. So this is just a, that's why I'm doing, that's why I'm doing the volume right here with him since he's a narrow stance power lifter and um, he just doesn't work it like that. So that's, we're just hitting a whole different angle and we're learning how to lock, we hit lock this, you know, lock this out. So it's, it's like a rocket being propelled. That's what we're looking for. Lock, trying to launch it and lock it. Always try to lock it. And if 10 just seems like too much, we can drop it to eight, okay? So I'm gonna stop you for a second. How was your setup? Did you feel like you rushed it? Yes, sir. Okay, so he, he, he says he didn't rush it, but he just jumped right up there and popped it up. Um, always try to set yourself. Always try to lock your hips. Be prepared for the movement. Let's go. And I gave him some more rest because he's dying. How your legs feel? Uh, jello. Okay. What kind of jello? Uh, like cherry. Cherry? So is it jello that's been in the fridge for a while or jello that's sort of melting? Uh, no, it's in the air, it's in the sun. All right, so try to go to the bottom. This is where this kind of counts here. You always want to keep trying to stretch things out. Almost like a pause in the bottom, very bottom, if you can. And that's what thing about the belt squat is you can you can pull with your arms. And as you can see, weight-wise, we're we're fairly close to what I was talking about. We're three on this side and two on that side. Um, and he's starting to cut the numbers just a little bit. I think we can get two more rounds out of him with the eight and the fives. And then um, the real sport of destruction begins. <laughs> Ready? Right there, I gave, what, 30, 45 seconds, something like that. You might want to put your other leg in there. <laughs> <laughs> set up. So when you step up, you can step up regular and then just kind of get your feet set. You don't have to try to do a wide stance jump. So now you're kind of, when you do this, it kind of brings everything into working more. If you come in loose, then you're not tight, and that's where a lot of injuries can occur. But right here, you learn how to engage more. So we're nearing the end. Maybe. Again, and use your whole body to set this up. Don't do a soft, I mean, get a good, get a good stand up with it, okay? And if you want to adjust your feet a little bit, you can. If you're having a little bit of difficulty getting down. When you're doing it, if you feel like you're just a little bit uncomfortable, adjust your feet. You always want to be comfortable. Make sure your stance is decent. You know, when you go down, you don't want, you don't want to be kind of moving around too much. You just want a nice smooth lift as much as possible. And he went ahead and put his, go ahead and get a picture of that right there. He's trying to hide from the situation.
So we gave him about a minute, minute and a half, maybe longer. Had to wait till the heaving breaths slowed down some and help him try to figure that out a little bit. He said his back was bothering him just a little bit. Um, and, and on the belt squat, you can use your arms to sit back as, as far as you want. So that's what I told him to do in this next step. So you can see it's kind of shuffling a little bit as he gets as he gets more tired. And what I mean shuffle, he just he, he sits back fine, but when he comes up, he jumps forward a little bit to come up. So if you want to, you can still use a little bit more arm to help assist you on that coming up. Don't be afraid of that. And remember on this one, if you want to go back one too, that's fine. But just remember, use your arms to lengthen it out so it takes the pressure off your back and the bottom. So just to go back over things a little bit, if anything in your back, or, back is hurting, just adjust out and don't be afraid to use the arms. That's what the arms are for. So put more pressure on the arms and then drive up. Drive up. You can keep a light hand on it, but if you learn how to accelerate to the lockout better, it's going to make your squats a whole lot faster. Lock it up. It's my favorite part. So use your arms to really pull you in. Use your arms to pull you into position. Okay, lock. Your abdominals are on fire. Okay. So just reach back. Drive really hard. So that's the end of the line as far as going up. This is going to be Josh's choice. Front squat or regular belt squat on the way down? Belt squat. Okay. So he selected for the belt squat. Good choice, by the way. So I've given Josh about two minutes or so just to kind of catch his breath and, and calm down a little bit. Um, we're fixing to do whatever however you want to call it. We're going to do a burnout set where we're just increasing the volume and just nonstop as much as we can. Um, uh, the, I told him that if it gets to a point where he needs to rack it, we can rack it for a second while I take the plate off. And this is just a, one big giant drop set. But um, he was mentioned earlier that he used to make fun of people who did cardio. Uh, ca the, the cardio and weight training is, is, is also a critical aspect of increasing your volume. The ability to increase your volume over time is what's going to make you a great lifter no matter what you do, bodybuilding, raw lifting, uh, multiply, whatever you're, whatever you're into, whatever sport, you're just trying to accumulate more volume over time. And when you do things like this, um, it increases the volume that you can do on your heavier lifts or whatever, whatever part of your lifting program you're working on it's going to increase your ability to recover between sets so you'll be able to go faster. You'll be able to go higher because you're recovering faster and you're not as fatigued. So, so you can bring your, you know, when you're hooking it up, you can either do it like that. I like, I like on, on the pitch arc, I like to get in it like this while you're off. But each, each, each belt squat, so just stand on it regular. Don't try to do wide first. Kind of pull yourself into position. Now work your feet out. Okay, so when you're ready to go, lock out, get your breath, breathe. You can move forward a little bit more if you want to, a hair. Okay, that's cool. So you have a little bend in the elbow at the top. So let's rock and roll, five. How we doing, buddy? Keep going. Need a second. All right, rock and roll.
This is another thing I like to do is when I'm breathing really hard because I'm sort of freaked out and I can't get my breath, there'll be a point in time when you just breathe through the nose a little bit and everything will go, and everything will calm down a little bit. Let's rock and roll. Lock it up. Yay! That's it. So that's just a nice little way to do with a training session. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for another great episode.